Welcome to Start With, the Tampa Museum of Art's virtual early education program for children and families. Sponsored by the Institute of Museum and Library Services, Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners, Tico Energy, and PNC Bank. Hi friends, I'm Miss Iris. Thank you for joining me today for Start With. Today, we're going to read a fun story together and then we'll learn about a work of art here in the galleries of the Tampa Museum of Art. Are you ready? Let's go. There are all different types of artworks here at the museum. What we have on view changes throughout the year, so there's always something new to discover. Right now, I'm in an exhibition called Purvis Young Redux. The artist, Purvis Young, created huge paintings inspired by his community. A community is a group of people that live in the same place or have something in common. Purvis would paint on things he found in his community, like wood, fabric, and even a door. So, inspired by the artist Purvis Young, today we are starting with community. Be sure to keep community in mind as we read the story together. Also, make sure to take a close look at the pictures in this book, because we are going to recreate them later in an art activity. Roberto the Insect Architect by Nina Layden read with permission from Chronicle Books. Even when Roberto was little, he went against the grain. Like most termites, he melted over maple and pined for pine. Oak was okay too, but Roberto didn't eat his food. He played with it. You're wasting a good meal, his mother said. Don't you know there are termites starving in Antarctica? But Roberto didn't answer. He was busy daydreaming about becoming a famous architect. Whoever heard of a termite who wanted to be an architect, the other termite snickered. Roberto, you should be a chef. But Roberto didn't want to cook. He wanted to build. Hungry to start a new life, Roberto realized he had to leave. So Roberto packed his bags and took the train to Bug Central Station in the busy, buzzing hive of the big city. The city was a place where you could build your dreams. It was a place where you would be accepted. It was a place where the other termites wouldn't bug you. Roberto beamed Hope like a lit up skyscraper. But Hope didn't come cheap in the big city. Neither did a place to live. Roberto had no choice but to rent a room in a flea bag hotel run by a nervous tick. He shared the room with a family of bed bugs. Roberto introduced himself. Then he built the bed bugs their very own beds. After a good night's sleep, Roberto began to look for work as an architect, but things didn't go very well. Show me what you've done, says the architect Hank Floyd Might. There are no termites in my houses, stated Fleas Van Der Rohe. I'm busy, Antonia Gaudi blurted out. Don't bug me. As Roberto crawled home, feeling like a pest, he was sideswiped by a fly. Watch where you're going, he mumbled. The fly started to cry. But I don't have any place to go, she lamented. Roberto wanted to comfort her, but he was nearly nailed by a carpenter ant trying to fix a rickety shed. Then out of nowhere, Roberto was almost run over by a stampede of roaches being chased from a diner. And suddenly, a frantic ladybug flew into his arms. My house is on fire and my children are gone, the ladybug cried. Roberto could see that he wasn't the only bug with problems. In fact, his problems didn't seem so big after all. Roberto wished he could do something for the others, but what could one termite do? A lot of damage, Fleas Van Der Rohe had told him. I'll show old fleas what this termite can do. I'll show them all, said Roberto. Back at the hotel, Roberto came up with a plan. First, he drew up some blueprints. He sketched houses and streets. He sketched stores and playgrounds. By the time he was finished, he had sketched an entire neighborhood. Now, I just need to find a good location, he declared. Roberto searched all over the city for the perfect site. He finally found an abandoned, run-down block of crumbling buildings. It was a total mess. There were piles of old wood and garbage everywhere. It was exactly what he was looking for. Roberto hammered and nailed. He sawed and sanded. He worked day and night. 
Like a magician, he transformed the block of junk into a street of extraordinary homes. Each one was a work of art. But Roberto didn't sign his artwork. Instead, he anonymously sent the keys to the new owners. Then he rolled up his plans and went home. Some very surprised bugs went home too. Tudor, the fly with no place to go, buzzed with delight. I'm a housefly again, she declared. Then Grant, the carpenter ant, arrived. He dropped his tool belt. Now I can have a real workshop, he beamed. The roaches were the next ones on the scene. You won't find us sleeping in salads anymore, they rejoiced. Finally, Dottie, the ladybug, and her children moved into their new lair. It's perfect, she sighed. It's fireproof. Quickly, word spread. Soon, everyone wanted to know who built these amazing abodes. Rumors were flying, antenna were buzzing. Barbara Waterbugs wanted an exclusive interview. Robin Leach promised to make the builder rich and famous. Stephen Shieldbug wanted the movie rights. Diane Spider searched the World Wide Web for the scoop. And the insect inquirer offered a reward to the first bug who brought the builder to light. All day long, bounty hunting butterflies took wing. Paper wasps swarmed the streets. Bold weevils crawled out of the woodwork. But late at night, a click beetle got the shot. The next morning, headlines screamed the news. Termite chips new homes out of old blocks. It's Roberto, Tudor hummed. He's our hero. Overnight, Roberto became the talk of the town. Architects offered him jobs, book publishers wanted his story, ladybugs sent him love letters, and his bug buddies threw him a big bash. At the height of the party, the mayor unveiled a statue of Roberto to be placed in the city park. Roberto built his dream. He opened his own company and became the most famous architect in the insect world. Students studied him in school. Some of his houses even became museums. But best of all, when little termites play with their food, now their parents say, be creative. Maybe someday you'll grow up to be just like Roberto. Now that we've read a fun story together, let's take a closer look at a painting by the artist Purvis Young. These are some questions to think about as you look at this painting. What kind of community do you think Purvis lived in? What kind of colors did Purvis use? What kind of buildings do you see? Are there buildings like these in your community? This artwork is untitled, but if you could give it a name, what would you name it? I hope you're inspired because now it's time for you to create. Get help from an adult and visit our website to learn more about a fun activity you can do at home all about community. All right, friends, I hope you had fun learning about Purvis Young and community today. Don't forget to come visit the Tampa Museum of Art so you can see Purvis Young's artwork for yourself. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.